What's up, y'all? So, the question I still get asked the most is about guards. Um, whether it's new players or players who have been playing for years, people still have trouble understanding guards. So, the way you get guards is mostly through recruitment banners. So, pretty quickly, I'm going to try to go through how you can get recruitment banners. Um, the last one's going to be the most important, but really quick, um, everybody usually knows through your daily challenges, your daily quests, you, the very last one gives you 30. So that one you can do every day. Um, also each day you can go through the goods exchange and request to get 15. If you have two farms, each of those farms can send seven per day. So that's 14 right there. Um, plus the 30 with your, your daily quest. 44 a day right there, you're on a start. The estate affairs gives you, well, I have no yellow ones right now, but the yellow ones I believe give you six for each one. So hopefully you get, you know, three or four of those per day. That's going to add up. Um, if you're new and you haven't gone through the research expedition, there are some of these that give you uh, recruitment banners. I left for a couple of years and I'm still behind on my research. So that's why that's the only one I'm not maxed out on. But if you're new, go to the research expedition every Thursday and that will help you get some more banners. Um, if you left for a while and you came back, there is something called Return of the King. And they have these wilderness beasts. You know, if you're gone for more than seven days... So this is another trick. If you have maybe more than two farms, you could have one of those farms not log in for seven days. And when you come back, you'll, be, you'll have the Return of the King benefits. And there's a store that you could get this Wilderness Beast. And when you do the Wilderness Beast, you can, the first five beasts per day, I believe you get like three banners. So th that's kind of worth, worth it too, because it also gives you gold. Um, the very... But uh, other ways that you can get, um, did I say the Musketeer Fort? This one here, if you do this little chest here, that usually gives you a certain amount depending on how far you are. I'm not very far right now. I've been kind of slacking on this. But that will give you a little bit per day. Um, this woman over here, she gives you some per day when you claim. It's usually 10 or 12. I'm not sure what that's based on. But that's another way that you can get some. Um, the Musketeer Fort store, it also gives you some there. So when you're doing well there, you could buy those and that helps you out. There's a hundred right there that helps you out. Um, the Twilight League store does give you some, but unless you're participating in it, then you're not getting a ton of rewards. Wait a minute. I think it's on the Weeder store there they are so you see right now we don't participate in this so i don't have very many i can only buy two not a lot but if you participate in it that's something that could help get you a lot more um the relic wars store is another way that you could get some banners here in the exchange store and i don't remember how many that is it's not a ton but it all adds up when you keep on going with it um if you participate in kvk the Warfare Supreme Store does give you some. I think I bought those already too. <clears throat> nope. So here you go. That gives you another 200. So that's, that's worth it to do right there too, every two weeks. So little by little, it adds up. Um, New World is another good way to get you some banners. The New World for the rewards gives you... Depending if you're one of the, usually people aren't one of the top ones. So most people are probably going to be between 100 and 500 and that gives you 100 banners This is about every two weeks. I believe it is so that that's worth it there to get you some more banners um, The last way to get banners that I think is probably the best way is through the auction house So a lot of people don't know about this um, Every two weeks i think it is the behemoth beast comes in and after he's defeated for the next 24 hours there's three auctions that come up in your kingdom uh 
an auction. Well, there's other auctions, but there's only three for Yukumi banners. Um, there's one for 200 banners, 300 banners, and 400 banners. They're 10,000, 15,000, and 20,000 gold for each one. If nobody in your kingdom knows about it, you're you're good. You can go through those and get those nonstop. Uh, story real quick. I when I left for a couple years, I came back and I went to this auction, <clears throat> and I bid on all three of them. Won them all, the cheapest price. It was no problem. Uh, the next time it came around, same thing, no problem. The next time it came around, somebody else bid on him. We bid back and forth. Um, but it was only one person. So the next time it came around, same thing happened, went back and forth, but I noticed it was still the same person. So if you got, you know, good relationships with people or this guy, I, I didn't. So I decided to just message him and said, Hey, I noticed it's just me and you all the time doing this. Let's take turns one week. You know, you'll do the three and the 200 and I'll do the 400. And then the next time I'll do the 400, you do the three and the two. Um, that ended up working well for us for a couple weeks or a, a, a couple months and then we had a third person and now for the last three or four months it's only been three of us so we alternate uh one gets to 400 one gets to 300 one gets to 200 and then we just alternate every every time they come through um but immediately after those those are the 24 hour auction and that's as soon as the behemoth beast is done the reset after that, those come up. As soon as those auctions are done, it opens up a bunch of other auctions. Um, and this is where you can really get a whole lot of them. Um, I'm kind of been low on gold, so I haven't been bidding on them recently. But look at the top four here. This is when I had a little bit more gold. And you see, in just those four auctions, I got 1,300 banners for 93,000 gold. I'll take that every time. Actually, if I was paying attention more, instead of bidding on them when I saw low prices, I probably could have got some better prices because there was still a lot more that sold. I just ran out of gold and was trying to take ones at good prices. But for the most part, I'm not going to spend more than, say, 20,000 gold on 200 banners, 30,000 gold on 300 banners, or 40,000 gold on 400 banners. You might not win something every time, but check it out every time it comes up and you'll probably find some really good deals. Sometimes you're going to get on and somebody's going to be bidding crazy. You're going to have somebody, I remember one time this dude was bidding 60, 70,000 for 400 banners, 50,000 for 200 banners. He was just going nuts and he was winning everything. The dude must have had, I don't know how much gold, but when that happens, just save your gold. Wait till the next time. Use it on other things. Um, well, for the most part, I only use gold on recruitment banners or speed ups when I'm marching during during KVK or, or other events. Um, so for the most part, that's all the ways you can get recruitment banners. There's other little events that come up, whether it's Beach Blast or, or other little things that pop up, but those only give you a few here and there. So it, it's not a ton. Um, if you want to buy some, they have the War Aid Center. Um, under the daily sale, they give you some there. It's not great, but it's better than the ones that you buy over in the um, limited deal. I don't remember what day it is. I think it's the Road to Victory. Yeah, you get 41 for 99 cents, 138 for five bucks. You'll be better off to wait till every uh, Friday and get these here you get one twice as much for five bucks for the same amount and plus you get these other two chests which aren't great guards you know once we start getting into this you'll see but these are not the, the latest cards that come out but they might help you with your second or third march um and things like the the musketeer ford or, or darklands where you got to have multiple marches um the next chest it's more guards but again they're not the most recent guards they're not the good guards that you're going to need um the bigger the gold chest it, is good because there are some other guards like Edmund and John Paul and Gannibal um, and those help you out with other things like um, the skill talents for training construction here's Gannibal it takes off 240 minutes every 24 hours for construction um, whatever this guy's name was 300 minutes for research every 24 hours 
and then uh, this guy here 120 minutes for training every 24 hours there's a fourth one that you can't get in those gold chests um, he's Delanis, Delanis something like that <laughs> and he helps you for the gathering stage 200% if you work that right and use that after you know your troops have been in your mind for a while you can win the first uh, stage of the gold event every time uh, as long as you do it right but him you have to buy um, those you could buy I believe for like 20 bucks I think they have it under a monthly special pay attention to the different ones don't buy don't go under guards because look here you can get for 20 bucks you can get every all four of those guards that I just talked about the gathering one with Delinus, um training John Paul Gannibal uh, whatever he was construction and then Edmund for research so those are 20 bucks for all four but if you go to the guards section and you try to buy them they're gonna make you buy 20 bucks for each one so you know if you if you want to spend make sure you know the right places to spend it because guns of glory will get you you know and they want to always tell you how you know this event or, or you're saving 500 percent by doing this or you know th they just put numbers up there all right so those are all the ways that you can get um, recruitment banners like I said there's other little events that pop up here and there that help you get some so first I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the witch guards to use for your marches um, last I'm just gonna go through these other ones really quick um, appointed guards pretty much you want to just use your guards that have the most stars but also keep your innovative each section together your innovators together your aides together your captains together unless it makes a huge difference i'll show you what i mean so this one here it's only one less star oh i don't have a max let's see uh i don't have any of these ones max which one can i show they're at least close here these are both six stars and really only different because of the level that I have for Henry but no that's for the guard talent that makes it better work because the last one is level nine for uh, Luna and and ten for Henry actually I should probably change those I'm not sure why I had those like that but um, it, it's pretty easy just to go through what you have and, and compare them that way and, and see what's better. So here we go. This is a good example. So Selena is a much better guard. The Artignan is a much older guard, but they're both at level 80. Um, you see the only difference here is that I have him at six stars and she's at four stars. And you see the benefits for him are still much better or somewhat better. Um... So that's why you really want to go by who has more stars. Now, when you're selecting the guard underneath them, is that the captain? Yeah, the guard underneath them, you want to appoint ones that are also the same um, same category, whatever they are. If they're lieutenant, do lieutenant. Because at the bottom here, you see the captain benefits gives you an extra 10%. So if you were to use, um, if I want to find another guard that had more stars or as many stars, um, it's going to take off that extra attribute bonus benefit. And, that, and that's what you want. But even selecting those, you can see a difference in the number of stars. Because you see, I have Rochefort appointed there, and he gives all the benefits. When I go to Selena, it takes away the cavalry health for the 84%. So you want to, the same thing, most stars, but if you can, keep their jobs together. Keep the lieutenants together, aides, captains, strategists, all those, uh, you know what I mean. Um, so that's for the appointed guards. Let's see, for the, for gathering, you want to make sure you have some aides when you're gathering. These are all the aides. Um, they're important because at the very top here, 
that little money bag it shows they give you 50 percent so it'd be nice you got five marches you know for the gathering stage you got five, or for all the time when you're when you're gathering tiles you got five marches you want to have ten of them so i actually have uh nine of them but there are some that give you some extra benefits uh, when you star them up let's see if i can find one really quick the argonaut might have one the constellation the second one gives you different benefits for gathering so i had him two stars this is back when this first came out i was just upgrading some i shouldn't have done it because it wasted star flakes but for the most part when you go to a tile to gather it will automatically put in which guards you should use so you see it automatically uh puts on two aids for me if all my aids are out um it's going to select the best ones that are left so if the argonon is there um if if that's my my fifth march and i it will put the argon on there because i have him with some extra gathering speed from the constellations so make sure you have some of the aids um again delanis you get you have to buy him um doesn't delanis also give you something hold on He's not an aid, but I thought he gave you some benefit there. Maybe I'm wrong. Yep, I guess I'm wrong there. He just only gives you the talent for the gathering speed. But that's right. He's good to have anyway for that reason. But he's one you got to buy. Um, that's pretty much it for the gathering guards. So let's actually get into the marches and the best guards to use for your marches so oh let hold on before i get into that really quick the um garrison guards the best ones are wards and sorry wagner and rochefort there's another one Vaubin is is pretty much the same as rochefort but rochefort is a lot easier to get to level up so that's why I have Wagner and Rochefort. Now Wagner you can get um excuse me, you can get through the fort in the store. You see right here they give you ten uh for ten thousand for two thousand each. Um every time this updates every two weeks or whatever it is that this is there. Something like that. Um so that's a way that you can get Lucas Wagner. Um to put on your wall and yes use your garrison guards for your wall it's going to give you the biggest benefits but you want to make sure they're start up as much as you can roach for you you'll be able to level up a lot easier and and lucas you could buy him uh through the fort and um level him up that way so now we'll get into the uh which guards to use for your marches um first it depends on what your what kind of march you run um, if you're a distance march, um, your stats are much better at distance, then you want to go for distance guards, the, the firepower ones. Um, if you're cavalry, then you want to go for the, for the charge ones, the bravery. Um, so it kind of depends what stats you have. You see, obviously my, my numbers are better for distance, so I'm usually a distance marcher. Um... So getting into the guards, I'm going to talk about the distance ones first. Um, right now, the best two that are out are Giselle and Gasconye. I don't, I still don't have him yet. Her, I was able to, to star up quickly. I had a ton of banners saved up because I was waiting for the new guards to come out. And um, I just... Didn't get lucky and get Gasconnier. So my, my first march is Giselle and Cellini. Uh, my second march is Elio and Malik. Because Malik is the, the second best uh, set, of, uh, the third best set of guards um, after the first set, Giselle and Gasconnier. Second set, Cellini and Elio. Third set is Malik and Aluna. So how do I know that? So when you go to a guard, if you look at the fifth guard skill, down here 
it shows you firepower 4. Um, so firepower is for distance, charge is for cavalry, heavy duty is for infantry. Um, Really quick, I don't see a lot of people using the infantry guards in their marches. They do, if you do, it's probably going to be a mix. You're going to have one of the infantry guards. Um, not bravery, heavy duty. You're going to have like Fen and Laika mixed with Giselle because when you go to the infantry guards, they help your damage um to, they help reduce the probability of death to your cavalry and distance troops so they kind of work together with your distance and cavalry so if you have an infantry guard like like fen or Leica that you have at, at four stars five stars or something or just much better than what the other ones are and you also have one of their good most recent guard then yeah you can mix those up um, and, and it's not going to be terrible, but for the most part, you want to match them up together. And what I mean by that is the two guards that come out at the same time. Let's look at Giselle. You see the first guard skill, she gives the curse effect, right? So the only other guard that gives the curse effect is Gascogne. You see right here, he gives you the curse effect also. Um... So they help each other out because when your enemy is under a curse effect, it gives you extra damage. So if you have both of those given the curse effect, then you're going to do a lot more damage. You look at Selene, she gives the shred effect, right? And then you go to Elio that came out at the same time. He also gives the shred effect. Um, the rest of them are, see, here's another one that helps with the shred effect. So they have multiple skills that help give you more damage dealt with the, with their own uh, effect that they give. Each of them have different effects that they give. Um, Malik, what is his? His is also the Shred effect, which is good if you don't have Giselle, Gascogne, Cellini, or Elio. You know, maybe you have Cellini, but not Elio or any of the other ones. Um, at least Selene, Elio, Malik, and I wonder, if, not Jaquette, if Luna also has the Shred Effect. Yeah, she does. Does Jaquette? That one does too. So actually, um, the Firepower, so Jaquette is Firepower 1. Um, so is Blackbeard. Blackbeard is Firepower 1. Um, Elena and Malik are Firepower 2. Selene and Elio are Firepower 3. Giselle and Gascogne are Firepower 4. Now, unfortunately, when Gis Giselle and Gascogne came out, they have the Curse effect. They don't have the Shred effect anymore. Um, so they don't work as well together with the older distance guards. So the best distance march is going to be Giselle and Gascogne. But if you don't have either of those, say you got Selene and Malik or Selene and Eluna, run that if you don't have Malik or Luna and you got Selene and but you have Jaquette or Blackbeard do Selene and Jaquette or Blackbeard you know um but always check that fifth guard skill you want the highest one the highest uh number either it's firepower uh charge or heavy duty charge is bravery by the way again um so let me just pull all those up really quick to show all the newest ones. I don't have... They just came out with the newest guards, uh, Victor and, and Cecilia, for uh, the cavalry guards. Uh, and you see they have charge four. They give... Uh, what effect is it? The confusion effect. So let's go back. I'm sure that they probably did the same thing with the cavalry guards as they did with a distance. So the ones that have charge three is Widamu and um, Econ. And actually they give the, the confusion effect. So the, the, the charge guards, the cavalry guards do work well together even with the new ones. Let's look at Selene, or Cecilia, sorry. She also gives the confusion effect. 
So the newest guards, Victor and Cecilia, do still work really well with Widamu and Econ. When you go to Econ, same thing, the first one shows your confusion effect. So when you have a march, you want to have, for the most part, unless, like I said, you know, you only have, you have one really good infantry guard, and then you only have one of either distance or cavalry, depending on what your stats are better at, then that's when you mix. But for the most part, you want to keep your, your two, either two distance guards or two cavalry guards together. Um, and with your march, um, a long time ago when we first started, there was a, you, you want a, a good mix, like a third of each, you know, distance, cavalry, and infantry. That was a long time ago. Those days have way passed. Now, a lot of people are saying 60-40, so 60% of your march should be distance or cavalry, and then 40% should be infantry. reason is your infantry is in front. As long as they're alive, they're going to keep your, your back troops alive longer. Um, now... Talking about the numbers of troops, um, let's see which one I have here. So I did, me and a couple players were practicing um, the number of troops to send in a march. This is before the Tormentor uh, came out. So the guy I was going against, he sent 500 of each, 500 infantry, 500 distance, but he sent 200 of his um, work three troops. I did the 60-40. I did 400 infantry and I did 600 distance, but I had 100 of the 600 level three work troops. You see, I lost this battle. Um, I killed only 643, he killed all 1,000 of mine. The very next battle, the only thing, the same player, same guards, he used the same exact number of troops. The only thing I changed was adding in an extra 50 of the um, Merc 1 infantry and then an extra 50 of the distance, uh, Merc 3 uh, distance. So I took away 100 of the T13 distance and added 50 to the other two Merc ones. And you see, I won that battle. Not by a lot, but I won that battle. That's a big difference. Um, I tested again, but I think he changed his troops. He ended up using um, a little bit less infantry, added more of the Merc in infantry, but he also added more of the distance Merc 3 troops. These distance Merc 3 troops do a lot of damage. Oh no, I'm sorry, that was me changing on that one. Going down to him. Uh, no, he was the same. He so Did he add more of the level 3 Merc troops? Let's see, let me go back again. No, he still had 200 there. So what did I change on the third one? Going back, this is me first. I added um, an extra, f no, I only had 450 of the infantry. And I added um, some extra, I added 50 level two ones. Just to see if it make a difference. It, it didn't, it was in between the other ones. I didn't lose, um, I didn't kill 643. I ended up killing 882. So it was better than my first one, but it wasn't as good as um, this march here, which had me marching um, close to 60-40. Um, I guess that's 65-35, if my math is right, which is probably not. But you, you get what I'm saying here. Out of 1,000, I sent, yeah, 45, no, 45% uh, infantry and 55% uh, distance. Um, I would probably lean more to, yeah, lean about that. I've li recently leveled up to have those level two now for the infantry, and I'm close to the level four for the distance. So I'd probably, yeah, 60, 40, 55, 45, something like that. But you still want to have more of uh, your, your best stat, whether it's distance or, or cavalry. Um, that's pretty much it. 
Um, constellations. Let me go through that really quick because a lot of people really have trouble understanding the constellations. And I'm going to go back to the firepower and the distance guards first because that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, there are old purple guards um, that give you other stats through the constellation. And what you want to look for is where it says benefits all troops. You see all those on the left do say benefits all troops. But when you go to the stars, there are some that also say all troops. So that gives you a, a, a big advantage because right now damage is the number. It's not really, let me go back here, back to the report. It's not really all about your distance, cavalry, and infantry numbers anymore. What they call is your bottom half, which is going to talk about all your damage down here. Your army damage, infantry, cavalry, all those damages is going to make a huge difference on whether you win or lose, uh, received and, and given. So going to those guards and doing the constellations is going to make a big impact on your numbers. Um, if you look at the fourth star for each of them, um, it would, in under the fourth star of the constellation, you know, over here, um, and then it's either the third or fourth of these stars, it's going to give you army damage. So you see, Jasak gave me two and a half percent, and these are a lot cheaper for in regards to the star flakes. It's 45 for this one, but that's because I'm in the the fourth star of the constellation, but they're a lot cheaper to get a lot more of this damage done over here and again you see this is all troops so it's not just damage it's also helping with your attack here 750 percent for distance damage that affects all troops um distance damage received minus five percent that that's going to affect all troops um going through here all troops distance damage three percent damage is is still good little by little defense 75 percent you see Grenadiers, total troop health. As long as it says benefits all troops or all troops, that's what you want to do. Because um, that's going to help you overall with your numbers. Elini, Elina, I have uh, four stars. I wanted to get her extra 3% distance damage received. And also the last ones um, were given because, what was it, the third one that gives army damage? Where am I? Number four. Sorry. So there's the distance damage. The third one there gives army damage, but it's only 1%. But I finished her out because I wanted to get 5% distance attack. That's always good for all troops. So you don't have to have these guards leading your march to get these stats because it says all troops. Um, right here, the air gunner helps your merc troops. And then the last one is your distance versus infantry damage, which is also very important. That's part of the bottom stats. And then when I finished out her um, four star here, it also gave me the minus 3% distance damage received. And that also benefits all troops. So you you want, really want to do those constellations. First, do your march guards to get that first constellation, I believe, you know, in my opinion, because it gives you the march capacity. These numbers here, they're they're okay. They help a little bit, you know, 600%, you know, nothing crazy, but it does help a little bit. 10% distance damage does help, but what really helps is that march capacity. But I think even more important because new guards are always coming out, so your new guards in your march are always going to change. Really important to go through and get those old guards, get their blue stars up. Now, I believe each um category of guards only has three purple guards that give you that have constellations for the distance you see here it's uh jasak alina and general dumas if you go to um the infantry guards i believe it's just oliver jules and constance that give you um, and one of the, they, they all give you different levels. So I think Oliver, I was doing him first. Of course, I'm only doing distance and infantry because that's my march. The fourth one, when you get to that third star, it gives you army damage again. And um, so you can look at that one as a total of 150. Let's see what is Jules' constellation, fourth one. 
that one gives you 20%. So five of those gives you um, 1%. I think I was wrong back here because I didn't realize that was five for Oliver. So Oliver, the fifth one. So that's 2.25%, right? So look at those and what's what makes most sense for you, you know, on, you know, how many star flakes you have, um, you know, what's quickest for you to update, what's, what makes sense, you know, which, which level troops you have. Some of them will do um, different Merc troops. So, oh, I should do that. Add an extra little 4% March capacity. Every little bit you can get is going to help. But, you know, depending on what your stats are, you know, do what fits you best. Um, and then the Calvary uh, Purple Guards are Galileo, hold on, Treville, and Dominique. There we go. And it's the same thing. Same thing as the Distance and Infantry Guards. Um, let's go to Galileo and just show you it's all the same thing. Those all benefits all troops over here on the side. You go to the fourth one, the th third one is going to give you army damage so there's another two and a half percent um army damage i might once i get my infantry and distance ones done i might come over here to the cavalry purple guards and do um you know as long as you know uh, everything else is going well and try to get those up to four stars and get that third one done just to get extra army damage because like i said damage is you know the 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 the, the main thing now it's not all about your your regular distance and cavalry numbers it's about your damage uh your damage to your damage received your damage versus infantry your damage versus cavalry or distance you know all that is is huge so with, with those there's a million different ways to go do all the damage numbers but i just wanted to keep this um with the guards uh with the shards um you can get the shards are these purple things up here those are the purple shards but the gold shards are a little harder to get um let's see if i can show you see the gold ones here you use those instead of a whole fragment for that guard so it's worth it to use those and save the fragment use the fragment to level up your star level for the guard um those shards they come out with different events sometimes that you can get them for free um I know one of them is in the auction house right now everybody should be doing a lot of auction house for the the tormentor but also there's other ones i think there's some other red ones that give you some of the shards and they'll have different events that give you some of the shards that will help you level up uh your constellation there um this is my my first video so thank you for bearing with me while i fumble through this but i've had so many people ask about this um if you have any questions Please uh, ask in the comments. I'll do my best to try to to try to help, and and maybe I could uh, make some more videos if you guys are interested. Thank you very much. Y'all take care. Bye.